Ask any Australian about Jetstar and you might start a war. Hated by most, loved by a few, an airline with a reputation for unreliability, inconsistency, poor aptitude for customer service, and possibly racist? I- I'll get to that. But we can all agree that when it's $39 to the Gold Coast, our concerns go out the window. So today, we're going to unpack Jetstar as a brand and show Aussies what they get when they pay for a fare that's perhaps not premium. Hey guys, good morning from Sydney Central Station. Today we're going to be flying on Jetstar Flight JQ723 from uh, Sydney back to Hobart. So if you'd watched the previous video, you'd know that the purpose of this trip to Sydney was to surprise one of my subscribers. He was very surprised, but now it's time to go back home and go back to work, unfortunately. And the only thing I always look forward to is a flight back, even if the flight back is with a low-cost carrier. So a bit about today's flight, so it's operated by an A320. and one thing that a lot of you guys have pointed out is that whenever I fly Jetstar, I always tend to fly on the more expensive uh, extra legroom seats. So today I've specifically booked a very standard seat to show you what you'd experience if you really want to cut costs and fly uh, with very minimal benefits. So I'm very excited to take you guys with me. So let's all go to Hobart together and see what else Jetstar has to offer. Whenever I fly to Hobart from Sydney and specifically on Jetstar, I always think back to that time that I had to move to Tasmania for the very first time and my parents were with me and that was actually the last time I flew a flight with them. Now the good news is today's flight to Hobart appears to be running on time. I had already checked in online and I just needed a printed copy of my boarding pass and my bags tagged because Jetstar requires all cabin bags to be measured and tagged prior to boarding the flight. I asked a Jetstar customer service agent where I might be able to go and get my bags weighed and tagged and she directed me to the flight closing counter. So I walked to the counter in question and I presented my ID and the agent there snapped at me saying your flight isn't closing now. I mean she had a point but I was only in that line because I was asked to be there. Alright guys, we're at Sydney Airport now and we're waiting for our flight to Hobart. But I just wanted to share this funny experience that happened. So when I travel, I always travel with this lanyard. And if you'd watched my previous video, you know where I got this lanyard from. Um, but when I was going through security, uh, she said, Oh, if that's your ASIC, you can leave that on. Now, I don't have an ASIC and what's on this is actually my driver's license and my green card for Tassie Transport. Uh, but I said it's not an ASIC, so I put it on the scale. Then when I went to get my ice latte, uh, I was paying for it and she's like, oh, and you work here, right? <laughs> and I was so tempted to say yes, because I think I would have qualified for some kind of discount. But um, unfortunately, my mom raised a very honest boy, so I said no. Um, and uh, yeah, I paid $8.50, which sucks, but oh well. Um, but yeah, we're just waiting to fly now, and I'll let you know how everything goes. Uh, so the A320 that's parked in front of me is a Jetstar 320, and it's actually flying to Perth. Uh, so Sydney to Perth is about five and a half hours, give or take. And um, I just can't imagine anything worse than like being cramped on one of those very standard economy class seats for that flight. I have flown Sydney to Perth before on Qantas uh, on an A330, thankfully, so it was a bit more comfortable way back then. But I am planning to fly to Perth again very soon, so if you have a suggestion on what airline you want me to fly to review that sector, hit me up. So Jetstar has a bit of a reputation for being bogan and I guess somewhat racist. In the most recent case, they ran into a bit of a PR mock-up when they posted this on their Facebook page. As you can tell, the post wasn't very well received and people weren't thrilled and the post was promptly removed. Now, personally, I've never felt racially profiled or discriminated against on Jetstar and perhaps this would be a very different video if that had ever once been the case. But a lack of cultural awareness definitely prevails in the airline and as much as corporations like to include flight
flowery statements about diversity in their language, whether this is put into practice is an entirely different matter altogether. I remember one time I was flying this exact same route and the cabin manager was securing the cabin and he picked up this bag that had fruits in them and he screamed at the couple saying, you're going to Hobart, you're not supposed to be taking fruit with you. There is a biosecurity law about taking fruits into Tasmania and perhaps that's what he was trying to communicate, but perhaps he could have done that a bit more empathetically and not made a spectacle of it. Now that couple he yelled at clearly couldn't speak very good English and they were very frightened and that just wasn't cool. And the fact that he was being quite chatty with everyone else on board made me wonder if he had singled these passengers out for some particular reason. Now, other allegations against Jetstar include their hefty overweight fees. On this occasion, I might have to side with the airline because these fees are clearly outlined in their policy. So don't come to the airport deliberately exceeding your baggage allowance and then scream at a staff member when they enforce their own policy. Another accusation that Jetstar faces is the fact that they just outright cancel flights for no apparent reason and just leave passengers stranded in random corners of the world. And I think that's inexcusable and I side with the consumers on this one. Yes, sometimes the cancellations happen for a legitimate reason like the flooding in Queensland, but I think airlines still need to compensate passengers and provide them with accommodation at the very least. And sleeping on the airport floor doesn't count as accommodation. Alright, plane taking us to Hobart. Say hello to Victor Hotel dash Victor Quebec Juliet. At 18 years old, the plane seats 180 passengers in economy. It has a 3-3 configuration and a single aisle. The flight crew today will work Sydney to Hobart and then the return flight from Hobart back to Sydney, totaling about 3 hours in the air for them, barring any congestion. A group of passengers that I can only describe as the boys were making a big racket behind me during the boarding process, loud and just generally lacking basic etiquette of flying. As for the boarding process, no rhyme or reason, just whoever's at the front. Also, no priority boarding unless you have a convincing argument for it, not even Jetstar Club members. <laughs> Our seat today is 8 Foxtrot, a very standard seat. Sydney to Hobart? Quite doable. Sydney to Perth? I'd rather drive. Now, whoever said you don't get free snacks on Jetstar clearly lied because, look, there's second-hand chewing gum for me in the seat.
with the aircraft now airborne, let's dove into our flight. First, tray table falls out of your armrest. I'm pleased to report it's clean and I think it's done away with the precedent on my recent Jetstar flights. No snacks today unless you want to get items off their buy on board menu. Just like my inbound, I don't even remember adding this banana bread to my order, but here we are, banana bread once again brought to my seat, accompanied with chai latte for our drink. Having now tried all the hot beverages off Jetstar's menu, I'm pleased to report that it's absolute sewage. But there's one thing on the Jetstar menu that doesn't disappoint ever. And if you've been a subscriber for this long, I think you already know what that is. Now, usually I think there's very little to be said about the buy on board menu of a low cost carrier because it's not designed to be premium by any means, but genuinely this ham and cheese toasty is where it's at, it hits the spot every time. Well, the crew today have been lovely, when I asked if I could film on board he said absolutely man as long as it's on flight mode, <laughs> I hope certain Singapore based carriers are taking notes here. Cabin manager up front was always smiling and even though it was an absolutely full flight, nothing seemed to stop them from providing exceptional service. So to conclude this flight, let's start off with the shortcomings, firstly ground staff at Sydney, what the hell? You can't ask me to go to a service desk and then scream at me for going to said service desk. While it doesn't bother me particularly, there's anxious travellers out there and I'm pretty sure that's the last thing that they need. Second shortcoming, definitely aircraft maintenance. Chewing gum in the seat pocket is a horrible look for an airline, especially in this post-Covid context. Where did Jetstar do well today? That was definitely their catering, at least partially, because those ham and cheese toasties are a crowd favourite. Cabin crew are also getting a huge thumbs up, very satisfied. I paid 258 Aussie dollars for a return fare from Sydney on Jetstar. Now as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in another trip report. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy the content that I deliver as it tells me that you like my content and I can keep delivering more of it. That's all for now, have a very pleasant day and I'll see you soon and stay tuned to the very end of the video for the total score.